All righty, I'm uh, here in the studio and uh, I'm getting set up for a painting. So I was gonna be setting up my palette and my drawing board anyways. So I thought I would just turn the camera on and pretend I'm normal, ha ha ha, and just set up my palette. And I thought, I don't know, whoever would be interested in seeing it, woohoo. Artist geek, as I call it. All right, so I will assume that the video is working. And then, so feel free to comment below. I won't be answering any questions like while I go along, like reading and setting up the palette. So I'm just gonna do what I do and feel free to ask questions below because I'm gonna read it all when I'm done. That's like a bonus for putting up these videos because then I get the chat afterwards which is awesome so I'm gonna to try to stay in the zone and I'm gonna turn off the camera after I set up the palette and my drawing board and I'm ready to like draw and paint so that I can just get into the zone and do a hopefully a fun painting it's not what I planned on doing but at the last minute because it's studio night um, I picked picked an interesting painting and I think I can do it in about three hours so um, I'm just putting out my inks this is going to be an acrylic ink on paper painting which is my favorite these days I have done canvas I have done what? Uh, plywood lots of plywood my cutouts are on plywood so I jigsaw them as well so these are just the different inks. This is my standard palette. I'll just read them out as I go. So in order to start, I have to <laughs> shake them all up because there's sediment that goes to the bottom and you have to mix them up. So these are acrylic inks. So I'll just call out the colors as I go. Usually I do them in both hands to kind of cut down on time. So I use um, India ink, black. I use titanium white which is the one I have to shake the most because it, it's white so it's the creamiest so it has the most sediment in it so I just shake this one for a long time I have a orangey red and it's only orangey rather than red because I ordered it online and when it showed up it wasn't the red it said it was anyhow and a Indian yellow this is a very standard one for me this is like gorgeous deep like yellow yellow oh it's delicious like sunset yeah oh and I'll, I always shake inks with my finger over the top of them because if you work with inks at all like this you have probably sh picked it up shook it and you hadn't put the top back on it and then you throw paint everywhere and this pigment is so intense that you don't want this getting on anything but your paper. When I lived in Vancouver, I was doing a painting in a rental house and I had my inks out and I had this beautiful, actually I think, beautiful turquoise. Oh yeah, it was this this actual bottle. I still haven't used it all up, but I spilled like half of it on their beige carpet. So me and my roommate spent the next like five days or something. Um, pouring buckets of water on the carpet and then soaking it up with towels and wringing them out and doing it over and over again until the turquoise came out of beige carpet. I'm serious. Yeah, crazy. This one is a purple lake. I don't use purple very often. I usually mix it myself because I have different blues. Like this is a indigo blue. This one is a rowny blue. And they're just slightly different. Um, more pure blue one is the indigo blue or the blue I like anyways um, the other ones have a bit of green in them which makes them kind of teal colored and I only mean like a titch like this is Prussian blue oh this one's delicious this is like deep deep blue and I have just a tiny bit of fuchsia left and I haven't been able to find it anywhere this is like the original Rotring um, inks that I use like in the early 90s yep that's right from my fine arts days so 
So this one's almost done and I can't find another fuchsia. Anyhow, so this is like, this is like a little bit of gold for me. And this one is one of the originals as well. And it's uh, red. And it's like pure red, not, not fire engine orange red. <laughs> fire engine orange. Yep. Yep. Did I get everything? Okay, so once everything is shaken up, a lot of times I just put it in order. Let me see, let me make sure we're still rolling. Uh, yeah, we're still going. Okay, good, and you can see, great. All right, here we go. Ah, so normally in, I guess it doesn't matter. We can go, no, might as well do it for a I usually go black first. And my white, they're your two basics. Um, then I have like a, <laughs> the joke would be skin tone, which we don't say anymore because it's ridiculous. Anyhow, that peachy, I don't know. It's probably actually the color of my skin, like vampire beige. <laughs> All right, and then I would put my yellows. Oh, actually, here's one. It's called Antelope Brown, and I only use this because I ran out of sepia. Sepia is like a ready, deep brown. Anyhow, it's the key to all paintings, but now I have Antelope Brown. Not the same. But I turn my antelope into sepia by adding a bit of red and a bit of blue. So it all works out. And then, uh, so the browns, my yellows I put, and then I put my reds, and purples and blues. So it's kind of like, makes sense kind of order. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Just get some of my brushes out of the way. Um, I'm only doing a little painting tonight, so um, these are probably the brushes I would use. Those are my sizes. This would be like a large area, like sky. So yeah, I'm talking a little. So I put the brushes there. Um, before I put out the inks, I'll just show you what else I have on my palette. It is, uh, this is a container like from, I can't even remember how many years ago, like back from my Collingwood studio. So like 2006, this is like 11 years old. Talk about sentimental, hey? I don't even think it's sentimental, it just, keeps working, so I just keep using it. This is my second jar of water. So this one's kind of like the, the main brush one, and then this is like the finer clean. Uh, this is actually just water in a spray bottle so that I can uh, add some water to some of my colors because uh, acrylic inks dry really fast. They're very pure and they just dry very fast. So when I paint, I also have to work very fast. Bit of water. I got that. Have my pencil, which I may draw out the initial drawing. I freehand draw, you know, some people have different methods, but I like the sort of my interpretation of what happens when, uh, when I draw it, because wacky things happen. Uh, I also have a timer that I set, which is a good idea, and I set it for 45 minutes. And I try to pay attention to it because it makes my body feel good. And Besh is upstairs, so he, here I'll just start it now because I'm already sitting, aren't I? So let's see how long 45 minutes gets us. Uh, I have way too many erasers for one person who hardly uses them, but loves them. Okay, anyhow, we won't walk down memory lane. Oh, and this is my palette scraper. Can you see that? Just like a paint scraper. So I already cleaned it off so that, um, I don't know, so that it was already clean and dry because I want it to be perfectly dry for putting the inks on the palette. Because if it's wet, they bleed, and then they all mix together, and, you know, it's fine, but... No, I like them clean. Uh, all right, so I got that. And I might as well take this out. So I'm going to be doing a uh, 
it's gonna be like a square painting. So this is my watercolor hot pressed, 140 pound pure cotton paper, um, watercolor and wet media block. Oh, these are so beautiful. And look, it's pink with black and white. Could it be any prettier? Anyhow, it just comes in this solid like, oh, let me show you. If you've never experienced one of these, oh, it's divine. So anyhow, up in the corner it says quality claim number 7250047. Like it actually has like a number. So the, all of, this is a stack of paper right here and it has been um, I don't even know what you would call it. Sealed together almost like a wax. And uh, so when you're ready, you can do your whole painting while it's stuck to it, which I think I will. It's like I don't trust that it's not going to go down to the next piece of paper. No, you're right. I am going to take it out. <laughs> um, anyhow, what you do is you stick your knife. Where's my knife? My pocket knife. No, not my pocket knife. Hold on. I'm going to go grab my, uh, I'm going to go grab my exacto knife. Hold on. Fast. Let me double check, make sure we're doing all right. Everybody good? Okay. <laughs> all right, I don't want to waste your time if you are hanging out. So, see this little space here? Okay, if you are a paper lover, like I love paper. It takes everything I have not to buy paper at every store, like paper stores. I can't even function. Oh, this is the hardest part. Okay, hold on. I gotta get it right under the paper. And you only want one sheet. I just love how, okay, see, I just got in. Can you see that? Anyhow, now you have to gently, you don't even really wanna cut it because I have cut the edges of it like in sticking the knife in too far. And, Anyhow, once. Oh, I just love that. Anyhow, these watercolor blocks, they're expensive, but they're worth it. And you, then you already have your pre cut paper, you know? I can't trust anything here because. Ah, just keep going. There's like a certain point where it just peels off itself. Ah. Ideally, you should cut all the edges, but I'm not that patient. Oh, look at that. Look, it still has like the wax edging around it. Oh, I just think that's so cool. Yeah. Anyhow, so here's my paper. So I'm going to move us over now and show you the drawing board for a second. Here we go. Hold on. Just my hands in front. Oh, is it focused? Hold on. Okay, hold on. Turning. So, okay, here is my drawing table. So, it's still set up from last night, so I'm just going to switch it out and I'll show you what I do. So, these are the photo references that I was using for my last painting called Night Owls. I shouldn't even be on camera. This is like, oh, oh. anyhow, I won't turn around. Um, so, this is a wooden drawing board with huge sentimental value. This drawing board was owned by the fantastic, like my favorite Canadian artist, uh, Brian Jones. And uh, hold on, I got a bunch of stories on the go at once. So these are my little thumbtacks. And so this was my reference photo, and this was the painting. 
we just did name that painting. That was pretty fun. Anyhow, you can see how my version of a photo is very different than, than what it looks like. But then again, it's very similar too. So anyhow, we'll take those off, move them out of the way, put them in the, uh, in the archives. So now what I do is I take our very beautiful paper and thumbtacks. And you can see all the history of other paintings. In the corner, Ugh. and because it's wooden, I put your thumbtacks into it. It's good wood too. It's not. It's not for the weak apart. All right. <laughs> there we go. I love my thumbtacks too. They're like fabric covered with polka dots in designer colors. So I love it. Uh, oh, look, new palette, oh, new canvas, also known as paper. Anyhow, so, and then I have my ruler handy, another eraser. I put my pencil over here, and my drawing board moves up and down, which is also cool. It's like old school mechanics, which is the best, with a big, like, no. My paper so now that I have the paper set up I can put out my palette of ink okay moving moving it's high tech hey <laughs> do I need to move back or is that good I'm gonna move back a little bit and I don't really want to be in it okay here we go so I think that's in the middle. All right, so now it's time for our acrylic inks. I'm gonna set them on my top. Ah, fantastic. So I'll just say the colors again as I put them out. This is my normal array of palettes and then I don't even put all these out these are just sort of I don't know if I have some a big color to make for some reason sometimes I'll use like um, not the tertiary secondary colors like purples but otherwise I usually use the primaries plus black and white and sepia okay so white so these have little little squishy top um, what do you call those? Droppers, which I almost lost my mind the first time I saw them. That's why I bought them. In the very beginning, I never had heard of acrylic inks, but in like our first or second year of fine arts, they told us to go to the art store and buy something we've never used before. And so I just started looking around the shelves and I saw these little eyedropper with colors in them. And I was like, holy shit. And so I bought the primaries, like I said, these are like original. Like I bought this 1990, maybe 1990. It even says Sir Wilfred Grenfell College Bookstore on the sticker. You maybe can't see there, you probably can't see it anyways, but trust me. Ah, I wonder how much they were. I think now they're like, I think I just ordered a bunch of Liquitex ones and they're about $8 each, I think. Anyhow, and they last forever. Well, they do for me anyways, but I don't use like a shit ton of ink. I use a lot of washes and anyhow, so I just drop, I don't even know like <laughs> how many drops was that? Seven? <laughs> I just kind of have a feel for it. A lot of times if you don't use your inks for a while, the, it's very hard to get the tops off, especially the white. It's just like, it's like glue. My black's running out. I do have another little black though. Here, it's just India ink. I actually have a large bottle of it somewhere. I just can't find it. So, use the old-fashioned method of pouring. 
Um, I don't put out the that peachy light color. Um, antelope. Like I said, sepia is the, the best of the best, but I ran out and I haven't been able to find it anywhere to order it. So I use antelope, which I find is a bit green. And just to kick it into shape, I actually don't normally use this color, but I don't have much of this beautiful red yet left, so I'll just save it. So I add a bit of red to the antelope make it a redder brown. Um, so I'm almost, I don't even know if I can get this one up. Oh, which is why I cracked a new one on my last painting. So, oh yeah, there. So nice when they're brand new, they're so easy to open and close. That's why it's good to keep them clean. Yeah, keep your jars clean. <laughs> Especially around the um, screw top. This one's original Sir Wilfred Grenfell <coughs> art supply store as well, but there's hardly any left, so I always have to pour this one now. Sentimental colors, hey? Right? And like I said, original red. Like, it's even called red. Yeah, I can't find red anymore. So, this is liquid gold right here, folks. Oh, I love this one. And so good to me. This one has been in every painting I've ever done with acrylic paints. Guaranteed. Maybe not fuchsia, but yeah. Uh, I don't use purple, and all I do is use the purest blue, which is the indigo. Purest blue I can find. I used to have the pure blue from the Roche Train, but I don't even think Roche Train makes inks anymore. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. All right. <clears throat> so how many colors do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven colors is my main palette. White, black, sepia, uh, like cadmium yellow. What do they call it? Indian yellow. And I have called process yellow 675, <laughs> which I would say is a cadmium uh, yellow light and pure red and indigo blue so a little bit of purpley blue anyhow that's my favorite palette and in order to get my brush ready to go so usually what I would start with is probably this one I'll show you again there's like this size a little one but my main one for like not that big of a painting, it would be about that size. I may go a bit bigger if I find I don't need the detail of this one. And if I need super detail, this is about as little as I get, but I can make um, some pretty tiny marks with this little sucker. Sucker with an S, S. <laughs> Anyhow, so what I do, cause the inks dry so fast, so I don't even put on um, my Wood stove? No, what do you call it? Propane. Fireplace. I don't even put on my fireplace when I use the inks because the heat makes them dry up too fast. So I just get some water on my brush, which gets the brush ready. And oh shit. I'm gonna have an, a slide over. As long as it's just the yellows that mix together, it's all right. <coughs> So anyhow, that keeps them nice and wet, and yeah, so then I'll just mix from there. Mix, 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 mix. So these are my acrylic inks. This is my palette set up. I have all my brushes. I have my two things of water, my main one and my finer clean. My spray bottle, if I need to just give them a, an injection of water to make them last longer. And I have my, let me move back over this way. Technical difficulties. Oh shit! Whoops! <laughs> High tech, hey? That's right. Remind me to fire my technician. <laughs> and then this is my drawing board set up. And I'll just come in here, clickety click. Like I said, I can, I'll probably put it up higher. 
So I try to put it at a good position that I, I'm at a good height so that I'm not slouching because I, I don't want to be Mr. Burns when I'm, you know, like 60. So I try to do, do it so that I sit up straight and, you know, if I need to adjust my board, I do it. And I set my timer so that I get up in 45 minutes and I stretch. So that's it. I'm ready to start. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Okay, I'll post the stages of my painting, maybe when I'm done, and then I'll show you what I came up with. You know, it's a different, different than what I expected I was going to be painting. All right, see you on the other side. Thank you for hanging out.